told myself that I won't say it, but I will. It is a long walk from there to here. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the third day of a very busy agenda. Uh, and there are 15 minutes between you, between me and, and, and lunch, and we still have questions. So let me be very brief. I'm just going to respond, I'm going to try to respond to a question that was put, uh, that was a view that was given by Monte Kalualia. I'm sorry he left. Um, he said that economists have a lot of role in macro policy because, presumably because, you know, there's a framework. Economists may not agree on the framework, uh, but the rest of the world thinks that there is a framework and there's data. So it's very difficult to argue with economists when it comes to macro policy. But he said uh, sectoral policies, on the other hand, is a different matter. And I think it's different because we have not yet learned the art of using good evidence to inform policy when it comes to sectoral issues. And I'm going to try and illustrate how this is being attempted in uh, the Punjab province of Pakistan. Punjab, Pakistan is about 200 million people, and Punjab is about 60% of uh, the population of Pakistan, so it's a large province. And it has a very active chief minister who actually wants to get things done. So he put, he's aware of all of the urbanization issues that were framed very nicely by, by, by Tony and then, uh, then, then the, some of the empirical work illustrated later. But he put three questions. He said, how, do, how am I going to create jobs for all the people who are coming to the urban areas? Pakistan is one of the most rapidly urbanizing countries in South Asia, which itself is a rapidly urbanizing part of the world. 226 million people will move to cities in India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan by the year 2030. So, so what kind of jobs will they do? You don't want to, these guys to end up in low productivity service jobs. You have to create manufacturing jobs for them. And the second question he's put it, he, he put is, what do I need to do for that? What, what kind of interventions can I, can I make in order to make these people employable? And the third is, where do I get the money to do this? So with these three questions uh, and, and the, the access that one had to IGC <laughs> researchers, uh, thanks, to, uh, thanks to DFID, uh, I was able to actually embed the, the policy research work in the policy agenda of the Chief Minister of Punjab. Uh, and that helped enormously. And some of the questions that were, that were, that were attempted uh, by the policy, uh, by the researchers were, uh, were very relevant. The, basically, on the side of making workers employable, policy research was focused on public transport. Uh, because the chief minister did a big sort of uh, a project that he's very, very fond of, which is a, 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 a rapid uh, a bus service in the, in the city of Lahore, a city of about 7 million people and growing very rapidly. He has a very, uh, very comprehensive plan for uh, a rapid bus service. Uh, you can see the, the, there's a green line, the blue line, the, the orange line. Uh, and these, uh, and, and then the red line, each of these lines is going to cost about $500 million. He had the money only to pay for the first, the green line. It's a 27 long, uh, kilometer long line. And they announced where the other lines will be. So researchers came in and they said, okay, there are several important questions to be answered here, which is how cost effective is investment in, in public transport? And they were able to gather the data based on the one line that's already been, been established and then say what impact is likely to have in the areas where future lines will be opened up. So it became a natural experiment uh, given the investment that had already been done and investment that was going to take place. So there is, the active research is going on in order to determine what the feeder public uh, transport service route should be that bring people to the stations that are along the line that have already been set up and also do some experimentation on how to vary prices in order to make, uh, the, in order to increase the returns uh, to the project. So researchers have come in, the timing is great, and they're answering exactly the questions 
better on the mind of the policymaker in the country. Similarly, health services, question is how do you make uh, cost-effective interventions? Uh, polio vaccinators uh, is one area. Getting health workers to actually turn up in their offices and two research projects were started. One was monitoring the monitor, which is a, a simple technological intervention. Uh, you give the supervisors Android phones, they go to the centers where they're supposed to turn up, and when they go there, they just make a call, the call gets registered, the time gets registered, the place gets registered, and this allows the supervisor in the central place to actually have a map in front of him of when the supervisor turned up, and because the supervisor turned up, the rest of the staff started turning up. So this has now been scaled up, and taken from the health service to a lot of services uh, across the province. A, Another uh, project in this area was optimal wage contracts. Uh, and again, its success has resulted in the, in the project being scaled up. There are other studies going on in land use. Uh, there are about seven or eight large service providers in the city of Lahore, and each of them have their own data sets. And they have their own subdivisions of the city of Lahore, and they, they often don't talk to each other. So there's huge coordination problems. And what the, the one set of researchers are doing is that they are using fairly sophisticated uh, 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 software programs in order to create uh, the equivalent of, uh, of zones uh, in the cities, uh, but zones which, which, which respond to the needs of different service providers. And, uh, and again, uh, this was done very successfully in the city of Lahore, and now it's being replicated in other cities. Uh, but, I mean, I can go on. This is a very exciting project on, uh, to address the question that the Chief Minister raised, which is, how am I going to pay for this? And uh, uh, Jonathan has already referred to that, as did Tony. Uh, there, are, there are two very exciting uh, pieces of research taking place, again embedded in the Department of Excise and Taxation, whereby they are experimenting with incentive payments to tax inspectors to deliver more of the revenue to the government services uh, than to pocket uh, it themselves. Uh, and similarly, Experiments are going on on how to use the existing rules of business of the Department of Excise and Taxation uh, in terms of postings and transfers, which, which is a huge uh, incentive uh, for people to work. They want to get posted in areas where their families are uh, and get promotions uh, uh, appropriately rewarded for the effort they put in. And what researchers are doing is to, ident is to use a, existing rules of business to see how by, by, by rewarding people in terms of postings and transfers uh, based on how much revenue they deliver to the treasury, uh, you can improve uh, revenue collection. Uh, again, embedded in the Department of Excise and Taxation, uh, the government of Punjab is actually now budgeting the amounts of incentive money that needs to be given and the project research is getting scaled up. I mean, these micro-interventions, uh, which then have the potential of scaling up, are important in themselves. But I think these have to be complemented by vision, uh, by research that informs the vision, the growth vision uh, for the country, or in this case, for the province. And therefore, coming together and putting the urban vision as part of the growth strategy overall uh, provincial growth strategy uh, is an equally important function uh, of researchers. So when you, when you come at it from different angles, you come at it from the vision angle, and you provide inputs, researchers provide inputs to have a coherent vision, and then you come at it from very micro interventions, using up some of the new research methods uh, that, uh, that IGC is, uh, is, is using, you really begin to engage the policymaker in ways, uh, in, in, in the difficult sectoral areas, uh, in ways that, uh, that I at least uh, have not seen uh, for a long time, my long career at the World Bank. Uh, it's not easy. 
Uh, even though the actual budgeted cost of these, the, this research is low, but because it's embedded at, in the heart of policy making, it's very time consuming. So people have to be, uh, researchers have to want to really engage with policy makers. And when they do, th a reward, even a higher reward than, than publication and the best journal is to see change being implemented as a result of your research. And researchers who are able to take that perspective uh, find it very, very rewarding to engage with policymakers. Also, you need to have, you need, you have to be lucky. There has to be a person in charge, the big policymaker, in this case, the Chief Minister of Punjab, who is a busybody. He wants to be active, he wants to engage, he wants to get things done. When you have these two together, then I think uh, Montek's concern that uh, economists have no role in sectoral issues can be addressed. I'll, I will end here. Thank you very much.